This past summer, I was at my friend Donovan's shop, and I was looking at his drum sander, and he said that he was thinking about getting rid of it, and he wondered if I wanted it. <laughs> so I, I jumped at the chance at that. It's a, it's a tool that I thought would be really useful for a lot of the, for a lot of the things that I tend to need to sand when doing wood turning, like, like the rings or the, the rim of a bowl or something where you've got one flat face and then an odd shaped back behind that flat surface like a bowl. So a few weeks later I went down with the truck to pick up the sander. So the sander is basically a big drum that's 30 inches wide and a little bit more than a foot in diameter and it sits under a table. So you can move your workpiece over the table and have it sanded by the drum. It works a little bit like a jointer, although the two tables on each side of the drum are at the same height, and you can't adjust them to, to different heights like you can with a jointer. So it's really not meant to remove a lot of material. It's just meant to make the, the surface smooth. So we moved the sander out. Donovan has a nice overhead crane that we use to move the machine out of his shop and to move a few tools out of the way so that I could just fit the back of my truck into the shop under the crane. But it worked really well. It was a nice day, so the drive back was straightforward. I backed up to my shop. I had my dad over to help unload the sander, so we moved the tables in. They're just heavy enough where I really can't move them by myself then I can use my engine hoist to get the sander out of the back of the truck. It'll just reach into the bed so I can lift things from the, from the truck this way. And the sander is still heavy enough where it can't really be lifted by hand. So you need some kind of mechanical device to do it. So once the weight is clear of the bed, I can slowly drive the truck out of the way then slowly lower the machine down. So I'll lower it onto a cart, and then once it's on the cart, it can be pushed around on the wheels. And we can bring it into the shop. I've got some tracks made that sit on the top of the stair into the shop. And the cart is built to the width of those tracks, or to the width of the stair, basically. So I can bring something in onto the top of the stair carefully <laughs> and then lift whatever the machine is up with the crane then remove the cart and the tracks and the stair then put the cart back under the machine on the floor of the shop and lower the machine down onto the cart the sander just fit on the cart but it worked under the drum of the sander, there's a dust collection port, and I have a dust collection port almost exactly in the center of the shop, which isn't being used for anything. So the, the thought is, is to put the sander right over that port in the floor. That basically locates the sander in the shop, because that's where it's going. Now, a few weeks later, I went to an auction, and I scored a motor, which I needed for the sander. It's a three-phase, five-horsepower, 1,200 RPM motor. Once I got it in the shop, I pulled the wiring box apart, and it looks like it's never been hooked up. So it's basically a brand new motor. So it was a good find. Now what I want to do is to put the sander on a little frame made from two-by material. And the frame will help hold the motor to the sander because I can attach both the sander and the motor to the to this wooden frame. And the frame will help hold the sander up to where the table surface on the sander will be the same height as the table saw. So I'll have that 34 inch datum around the shop. So once I had the, the frame made, I could bring the crane over and lift the sander off the cart and put it down onto the frame. I got it 
put in place and it, it seemed to work fine. And then I remembered I wanted to hook up the dust collection. So, so both the, the pipe in the floor and the port on the sander are six inches in diameter. So I cut a six inch pipe. I would have to do that as I was lowering it because there wouldn't be a way to get the dust collection pipe between the, the hole in the floor and the port on the sander once it was in place. What I ended up having to do was to lower the sander onto the frame and into the dust collection pipe all at once. It was a slow, careful process. And then I could put the motor in place. Now the sander was originally driven by a flat belt drive shaft. So I took the flat belt pulley off. I had a choice whether to, to continue with a flat belt and get a flat belt pulley for the motor or get V-belt pulleys for both the, the shaft and the motor, which is the way that I ended up going. It was a little bit tricky because the, the shaft on the drum of the sander was a big kind of odd size. I think it's a 1 and 13 sixteenths of an inch, which actually exists, I found. <laughs> The other thing that it was going to need was power. So I needed to run a wire from the wall over into the center of the shop. And I have a three inch pipe cast in the floor to run wires in. So the first thing to do is to tie a paper towel to the end of a string and then use the shop vac to suck that paper towel through the three inch pipe and then I can fish the paper towel out the other end and get the string through. And then once I have the string through, I can use that to pull a rope through. And then once I have the rope through, I can use that to pull the actual wire through the pipe. And it's a big number 10 four wire wire. Then I could bolt the sander down to the frame. I wanted to make a quick structure to hold the switch. So this will just hold the switch up off the, up off the frame in a nicer position so that one doesn't have to bend over quite so much to get to the switch. Then I can wire up the motor. I stole a piece of number 10 four wire stranded wire from my planer to go from the motor to the switch. And then I could wire up the switch and attach the switch. And the motor runs perfectly. Super smooth, super quiet. Just like a brand new motor. <laughs> I found that the belts I got were just a hair short. So I had to raise the motor up just a little bit. So I put a piece of plywood under it and that was perfect. And then I bolted the motor down. and it seems to work. Although the shaft for the drum seems to slosh back and forth within the frame, and it does seem to vibrate quite a bit. So I put the rest of the sander together. There's some small parts, I think, that help the dust collection work better. Then put the tables on, and they really just sit on top. And then there's some little bolts and little brackets that hold them in place. So the drum can be raised and lowered and the tables can be moved in and out. That's basically the adjustments. And it still seems to vibrate quite a bit and the main shaft kind of sloshes back and forth. So it needs some tuning up. It needs some work. But it's basically together. But it is kind of scary to run. It feels like it's going to come flying apart. But it does seem to work, and it gives a nice finish. So it still needs quite a bit of work. I, the, the drum des definitely needs balancing, and I need to figure out how to keep it the, the drum and the axle from sloshing back and forth. There's not a, a good way to, to tighten it up. Then one other thing that needs to happen, I need to slow down the drum. It's spinning way too fast at the moment. So I think 
probably the best way to do that is to get a variable frequency drive for the motor to, to sort of tune the speed of the drum to where it doesn't vibrate so much. Pretty much the reason this was given to me is because the tables have a bend in them. The owner before my friend Donovan owned it stored a 12 inch joiner on it and it bent the tables. So they're sort of bent down in the middle now. And for this to really work well, they have to be absolutely flat. So the, the thought is to build wooden, new wooden tabletops, and that'll let me attach things to the table as well. So I can make jigs and maybe a fence and some sort of rollers or something to, to help hold the work down as it's being pushed over the sander. And a, a safety thing that really has to happen is I need to build a cover for the belts. So that, because the belts at the moment are more dangerous than the sander in a way. Thanks for watching.